Hello everybody and welcome to Storytelling Philosophy and Reception. Today we are welcoming Brady Kiesling. Hi Brady. Hi Bettina. Creator of Topos Text, which is a really, oh my gosh, just just really a game-changing tool, I think, for um, for classicists and anybody really researching um, literature involving uh, the ancient world, especially a, a, a very particular, uh, very particular places. But we'll let Brady talk about that. So please talk to us about Topos Text, Brady. Well, thank you for inviting me, Bettina. Um, Topos Text sprang about from this completely hopeless desire I had to get over sort of my inability to focus on anything for very long and allow me when reading an ancient text to answer the short, easy questions while I was reading without having to disappear into the library. And ideally to be able to read texts um, epitopu, that is on the spot, standing on a mountaintop surrounded by ancient gods and heroes. So I live in Greece, so theoretically there should be gods and heroes everywhere. But uh, in practice, you know, there's a lot of wind and sun and rain, and you want something small and portable that you can look at to oh cheat as your. You know. That's right. I, I forgot <laughs> to tell everybody the really important thing that I uh, met up with you in Athens in June, was it? I'm losing track of time. Was it May or June when I met up with you? Um, to, to talk with you um, about Topos Text for Cosmota TV history uh, TV channel. So that was that was wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Brady. Um, yeah. Okay, well, the idea is that Topos Text is simply a library of ancient texts and English translation. I've, you know, plundered as many texts as I can from online sources, a few I've scanned, a few I've, tra I've translated myself, but mostly texts that are available in the public domain, um, adequate translations. And I warn you that I'm not a literary geek. Uh, I, as an undergraduate, I had to read all the great, uh, you know, Greek literature, but I'm more interested in the puzzles created by literature. And, um, you know, for example, Homer, who is a, an amazing resource for us, because um, it turns out that, you know, he, Homer was telling some very good stories. A lot of these stories are designed to appeal to an audience that not necessarily like the current audience. I mean, I don't need to read about spears going through people's teeth. Uh, um, you know, the parts I cling to are the, the more <laughs> romantic parts, but also the theological parts. Um, because um, in the course of becoming a historian and archaeologist, I began to realize that the role Homer played in ancient Greece and Rome is not the role it plays today. Um, the, the Greeks had one huge advantage over the Romans who moved in and sort of conquered them. Uh, they had ancient texts and ancient gods who were more interesting and more mysterious and more subtle than anything the Romans had. And um, Homer became an instrument the Greeks used to remind the Romans that um, you know, I know the Greeks were not really the losers in all of this. Um, uh, and so um, uh, a huge industry grew up uh, in, in Roman times of forcing not only Greeks, but also Romans to learn, uh, learn Homer, you know, to memorize great chunks of it, and then to try to answer these unanswerable questions based on the idea that Homer was a real poet talking about real events where there are knowable places, knowable people, and essentially real gods who, if you read Homer, you are getting the earliest, most authoritative hint as to what their personality was. And they tried to find their answers where they could. And 
Homer was the most obvious place to look because he was the earliest and the grittiest and the somehow people were sure he had some divine inspiration. Um, and the, that divine inspiration, when you see it, you grab onto it and you clutch it to your bosom and, uh, and try to, you know, milk things from it. Now, Brady, um, your background is actually on archaeology, is that right? I studied ancient history with Eric Gruen at Berkeley, um, but hated the idea of spending my life in the library. So I did as much archeology span as I could. So I, I was part of the Berkeley excavations in ancient Nemea, dug it briefly at Corinth, dug at Aphrodisius in Turkey. But my feeling is that archeology span is a tool for understanding history, a very important tool. The books we have, you know, what survives of the past is full of holes, and it's a very biased source. So you need physical objects too, too. And, you, and you put them all together. So speaking of physical objects, and of course, topos meaning location, right? Um, can you somehow demonstrate how someone who is studying Homer, like the catalog of ships in the Iliad, uh, could use topos text? Okay, well that's that's easy. Let's uh, let's share screen and see what happens. Okay, if you are with me, we are somewhere in book two of the the Iliad, and a long catalog of people who came to fight uh, at Troy, um, you know, from various places, um, and you see Lindus and Iaulus and Camerus. Um, the idea is that. Each place name in Topos text somehow has, uh, I've attached an ID to it, and that ID is attached to a set of coordinates. So if you click on Lindos here, it'll pop up a map that shows you Lindos on the island of Rhodes. And if you, you have a choice then either to click back or else to go deeper. So say Yalisos, which is um, also on Rhodes, a little further up from Lindos. And if you click on that, it'll give you a very brief thumbnail on, uh, uh, on the Aliso saying there are 30 hits in the Topos text, uh, text library, but then you can go to view place and you hold your breath and see if it works. And yes, indeed, there are 30 hits uh, in 20 different works. And there's a modern description, which I stole from someone, but I tell you where I stole it from. And then, there are texts beginning with Homer's Iliad and Diodorus Siculus, who's a writer on myth and history, the narrations of Conan. And if you are interested in a given, say you're only interested in the Latin sources, you can filter. So you've got Pomponius Mela. Um, if you're uh, interested only in, um, in, um, talking about the, the Ialysians as opposed to Ialysus, you can click for ethnic group and you can say among the Ialysians because there it's a slightly different from uh, Ialysos. Or if you're interested in uh, um, what kind of books talk about it, here's nature books with Pliny the Elder. Um, so you can filter in various ways or you can just select directly by, by an author. But the neat thing is, at a glance, with this keyword in context, you can skim through every mention in literature, well, in important literature of, of Ialysos. See um, the Athenian tribute lists, that's an inscription. Um, and if you see something that sounds really interesting to you, um, uh, yeah, who reigned that Dialysos came to Apollo, and you, that's in, in Pausanias' description of Greece. And so you can click and read the full paragraph uh, of Pausanias talking about Dialysos. And if you want, you can then go to the full text of Pausanias and totally forget that you started with, uh, with Homer. And this is one of the bad things about Topos text. It does lead you down many rabbit holes, um, but um, uh, I am, the, uh, and there, there are some issues with the back buttons uh, still, but, uh, um, but yes, here we come back to where we were. 
So, and that, so as you're reading, you can get a very quick look at um, at what you're um, at, at the places being mentioned. If you see a name that appeals to you, you can see who Phaedippus is. Um, he's a mythical son of Thessalus, and uh, um, but uh, you don't want to go there. Um, but um, it's um, it makes it pretty fast to to get a sense of Machia. And the answer is we don't really know, but there's someone that has a theory of where Thav Machia is. And if you, um, if you go into it deeply, you can, uh, you can find out more. Um, so at any rate, a huge number of places have, um, uh, have their names indexed to this, that's now 800 texts. And sometimes you find useful things, sometimes you waste your time, but the point is it allows you to be very quickly and easily curious about texts. And also if you're reading Homer to discover um, the connections between Homer and other places. And yeah, um, to that end- If, if I may interrupt, yeah. for, for instance, um, you know, you're looking up the, the Iliad and there's this fascinating um, character Idomeneus from mm -hmm. Crete. And so, you know, you just want to start by saying, I want to find out about Idomeneus. So you would then go to, would you start with people maybe? So what would you well, uh, One easy way to do Idomeneus is to go to, um, is to move this, is to go to the people section and, um, and then do a search for Edomeneus um, and see who comes up. You have Edomeneus, a diplomat. You have Edomeneus, son of Deucalion, the, the Greek mythical character, king of Crete. The Edomeneus of Lampsicus is a Greek philosopher. Um, and it's, we probably want, want Edomeneus, the son of Deucalion. Um, I hope that's the one we want. All anyway, right, we'll, we'll go see. And uh, that we don't know much about him. He's a mythical character, but we have many uh, examples of, uh, of him in Homer. We have, um, oh yeah, we have too many of them, but uh, let's. Uh, Marvelous, and, and maybe a cross-reference with Crete, would that work? Because we, we know. Well, yeah, he's king of yes. Greece. Now, one, one thing you can do is you can show all entries and then in the text, search for Crete and see, um, um, see which ones uh, there. It'll only show you texts that are, have Crete mentioned with Idomeneus, and that makes it a little faster. Um, and then there's another feature of Tobos text, which I use a lot because my questions are always a little a little strange, um, and that is the proximity search. So say you're interested in Edo Meneas, but you're not sure if it's a, with a US or an AS because some of one way or some another. And then you want to see when he's connected with Troy. So you type in Troy, the, your two terms, and you select uh, within a hundred characters of each other, say, and pick go to, and then you wait for a few seconds. It takes a while to pop up, but in principle, you will then see ten instances where Idomeneus uh, is mentioned in connection with Troy, and it's in the Iliad and Horace's Odes, um, and Strabo's Geography, and Dictus Cretensis's Trojan War Chronicle. So. Some and then Malalas's chronicle, a uh, chronography. I mean, some really weird books uh, uh, that you can then uh, take a look at to see um, see what's going on there. Um, so, uh, fantastic! Can, it, uh, can we get out of Topos text now and um, just talk so the audience can see you for a little bit? Uh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, can we? Um, is there something you wanted to? something more you wanted to show us in Topus text or can we 
um, get out of touch? That's, I think that's probably enough for now. Um, that, that's the, the basic idea. There are people, places. Oh, let me just show you the, the texts. Um, I, there are, you know, 800 texts and you can filter by language, but just look for, for any text of interest. I mean, say you're interested in Hesiod, it'll just show you the Hesiod I've got. Um, and um, anyway, so if you just want to read a text, so you can read, read the Theogony online. And um, it's an old translation, but it's, it's okay for many purposes. So anyway, that's, that's how Topos text works. Uh, you can indexing texts, places, people, and then, um, then searches. And one last thing to show is the downloads feature. Every place in that I've cataloged Topos text can be downloaded as a huge Google Earth file. So you can play in Google Earth, you know, looking at places there. So, and it's, it's free and I urge you to do it because it, it really is fun for exploring ancient places. And one secret is that I have spent many happy years going to obscure archeological sites in Greece and finding the pile of rocks that scholars say is maybe the site of uh, whatever ancient, ancient Pylos or whatever it is. And uh, so if you take my points in Google Earth and zoom in on them, very possibly you will see actual ancient walls sitting there, or at least the parking lot of the archeological site. So it's, it's much more detailed and accurate uh, uh, topographic information than you're likely to find elsewhere. It's very granular, granular and, and accurate. All right, so that's what Topos Text is about. So now let's stop the sharing and talk about real things. Oh, that is fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for taking us through that step by step. Um, you know, because otherwise, like with me, I, I'm very visual when, pe when uh, uh, if people are demonstrating something to me, I need to know step by step, I, I write it down, but also I have to actually see what the heck is going on. So thank you so much for, um, for taking us through that. So on the day that I had, um, that my film crew and I came to, to interview you, um, we were actually doing a tandem interview um, in a particular location, and I'm about to, uh, hopefully, I will be interviewing them again soon. Can you tell our viewers where we were and uh, who, who this group was? Well, we met in the offices of a little group called Dipolon.org. They're um, a group of Greek archaeologists, the nicest people you'll, you can imagine, who have been systematically mapping ancient Athens pulling up old excavation reports, turning the, the site diagrams into um, GIS files and putting them all together in a map with lots of other information. And they've basically charted everything old in Athens and, and put it up there for free on their website. Uh, they're working on apps for the future. They have an app for the, the city walls. Anyway, we talked to uh, uh, Maria Karayanopoulou from, from Dipolon and, uh, and got a good sense of the energy and enthusiasm that's going into digital humanities in Greece with Greeks uh, doing a fantastic job. And uh, anyway, it's, it's very exciting. And um, now how does that work uh, along with Topos text, because it, for me, it, it really does. Can you explain um, how that would work for somebody who's researching, uh, let's say, Homer, Crete? Now, your, uh, you know, your Topos text encompasses, it, it seems like it's a very vast region uh, as compared to Dipolon.org, right? This is my problem. I love the details. Unfortunately, when I started Topos Text, I decided to grab hold of any ancient place that had a serious literary footprint in, in Greek and Latin classics. Therefore, it goes from Ultima Thule, you know, somewhere in the Orkneys, across to Sri Lanka. Um, 
but uh, realistically, uh, I know very little about Spain and the Netherlands and the like. Uh, I know a lot about Greece, and so Greece is very granular. Granular. I will map every ancient tower I can find. Whereas you know, it's in Spain or 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 Italy, only famous places that Cicero mentions several times or the like. Um, so it's, uh, at any rate, it's, it's the whole uh, classical world. But for me, the exciting thing is, is drilling down and here Dipolon, because you know, they've essentially charted every rock in ancient Athens. And my goal working with them is to find the ancient text that goes with every rock in Athens. And sometimes we can do it, often we can't. There's plenty of more work to be done for generations of scholars and we keep changing our mind as more information becomes available. But uh, yes, that's the dream. If with these two tools, you, uh, you then uh, you know, know the physical remains, the literary remains, uh, throw in a few inscriptions, and which are, we will gradually add, and then you have the full picture of, of the ancient uh, of the ancient city. Fantastic! Thank you so much, Brady. That's I, I think this is go again. This is a valuable tool for me, and I hope that um, uh, researchers, uh, especially undergrads, can now be introduced to it and and have fun. Uh, using your site. So thanks again. I'll be saying goodbye now for the audience, but but you stay on um, after we say goodbye to everybody. Once again, thank you so much, Brady. You're very welcome, Bettina, and keep up the good work and keep singing those old songs. <laughs> <laughs>